right there, how white folks got so rich. The untold story of American white supremacy. I mean, I, I just I just read about the Indian land grab and I'm like, my gosh, man, good Lord. No wonder we don't want to teach the truth. No wonder we don't want to teach the truth. Because that means we've got to look people in the face and say, our forefathers were the worst people in the history of mankind. The things that they did, what we have done to the African Americans. The estimated number of wealth that came from slavery, from free labor. And that's what it was. And they estimate that the, that the amount of money that came from slavery was around $24 trillion. You can't even grasp that much money. The average person has a hard time grasping what a billion dollars is. A trillion. And a lot of people don't want to admit the truth because a lot of people also are scared. But what happens if what happens if, if we actually do have to maybe pay reparations? Understand that everything, everything, that beautiful capital in Washington, D.C. was built by slave labor. The majority of the churches in this country were built by slave labor. Our forefathers were lazy. Here we are in the 21st century. Yeah. And these fools still trying to build up color in the earth. That's right. Forget about your skin. Yeah. Forget about your color. Forget about the color, how white you are, how brown or how dark or how whatever. <laughs> Repent of your sins. Hallelujah. And be bad. Every one of you. Hallelujah. In the name. Every one of you. Hallelujah. In the name. Right. It's not about skin color. It's about convicting men of their sins. In fact, you don't get sin. You don't get different skin colors without sin okay so if we go at the root of skin color we're gonna find some sin okay some transgression against the commandment of the most high i.e how miriam turned white as snow okay god turned her as white as snow you see what i'm saying so god does not judge off the premises of just someone simply having a certain skin tone okay but the the way that that person it manifests sin in their members okay at the root of that of how they became to look like how they look you will find some sin okay and it just so happens that one of the ways to identify the sinner is by skin color that's just one of the ways Okay, another way is by their deeds. Okay, the Caucasian man who wrote the book, How White People Got Rich, in that two minute clip, he identified the criminals and the victims by skin color. Okay, he also identified the nation's capital building and most of the churches that have been built here in America as a part of the evidence. You see what I'm saying? And as I always state on this channel, I am not biased. Hence the reason why I provided the testimony of someone who does not look like me. Okay, why? To renounce the sins of his forefathers, that they shall bear fruits worthy of repentance through reparations. And that's just one of the ways to bear fruits worthy of repentance. You see what I'm saying? The scriptures state that through crafty counsel, Esau used the black face of Geno Jennings and Vody Balkum as token Negroes who picked themselves up by their bootstraps. Okay, the scriptures talk about how they will use crafty counsel to stop these people from being a nation. So the Most High going to cast them head first into hell for denying him before the white man. You see what I'm saying? The failing, let me be specific, they're failing to warn him, to convict him of his sins for the sake of their prominence. Let me be clear. The Geno Jennings and Vody Balkum 
They fail to warn the so-called white man of their sins. The scriptures state, cry aloud and spare not, lest their blood shall be on your hands. You see what I'm saying? That John the Baptist got beheaded for rebuking Herod, who had his brother's wife. Okay? The apostle James died by the sword. Stephen stoned to death. You see what I'm saying? Christ crucified. You understand? Paul in prison. Peter in prison. John, the revelator, in prison. You see what I'm saying? But these modern day Negro preachers, they have post-traumatic happy slaves syndrome and this revised oppressive racist system. Okay, the behavior of these Negroes and white daddy are not Christ-like. Jesus would not have raped another man's wife, whipped him to shreds, and then you, on top of that, getting free labor, eating good, and go dookie on your toilet in peace. No, the devil is a lie. Uh, neither would Christ have received the proceeds from ancient blood money, okay? Because Christ said, oh, no man, nothing but the love of God. And he also said Satan had nothing in him. You understand? The demons have legal right to those who benefit from the sins of slavery. You understand? Why did God pass the sins down of the father down to the third and fourth generation? Because our forefathers can never outlive their sins and personally repair the wrongs or suffer in one lifetime because man is a vapor. He's only a vapor, okay? He may have, it may have took him only five seconds to come in some slave's wife, okay? That's only five seconds of sin. You see what I'm saying? And it may have taken him another 10 minutes to whip and humiliate his slave. But five years later, let's say the Most High kill him in his sleep and demons drag him to hell to rape him for all eternity. That still does not account for the scars, the wounds that he left in his wake, okay? But that righteous marital union still suffers the emotional scars from that dead devil. I mean, again, look at heretics like Geno Jennings. He's plagued spiritually by the afflictions Esau imposed on our ancestors who were prohibited from using the scriptures to convict the slave master of his sins. This is how many men with black skin preach the prosperity gospel and or a super vague, all sin is the same gospel. And all sin is not the same, ancestrally or individually. Even this wicked nation does not judge all sin the same. A man who commits murder is worse than a liar. Okay, a murderer will face prosecution from the judicial system and ultimately from God himself, who again visits his iniquity even onto the man's children and his children's children. And Christ warned us about Negroes like Geno Jennings who go into the way of the Gentiles. So you are right. <laughs> it's not about skin color. Because you are the prime example of a Gentile with black skin. You are rich and already have your reward. You have been born again in the image and likeness of Esau. And from such, turn away. Run. Okay. A real man of God does not speak vaguely, but explains the intricacies of sin. So men may know what they are convicted of. You understand? just like how the judicial system works, okay? The Most High described these people so they would be marked as a warning to the nations for repentance, okay? That's the purpose of skin color. The legal system seeks the identification of every subject, suspect, and criminal in this society. So a person's skin color it's listed on their driver's license and it's required for a job application and many other things. Whenever evidence is needed to prove something, identification 
is a part of the process. So how much more does the Most High provide proof in his word, identifying the Semitic people by, but certainly not limited to skin color? In Romans chapter 11, verse 21, Paul said, if God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. So this passage warrants us to identify who are the natural branches that was not spared by the wrath of God, okay? And who are the grafted in Gentiles warned about the wrath of God, okay? In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37, God cursed his people to be an astonishment a proverb and a byword among all the nations where he said, quote, I will drive you, unquote. Okay, so from these two passages, it is apparent that God wants the readers of his word to identify who these people are because they disobey his word. What is his purpose for doing this? To deter future people, many to deter many people from committing similar sins. So there we have it. That's one reason why skin color matters. Because the same people who God had respect for in Exodus 2.25, and he revealed his word to Jacob and deals with no other nation in Psalm chapter 147.19, and these same people he called a holy, special people in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Even these people got judged harshly to this day and thought it important to intricately describe their skin color, okay, their strengths, their circumstances, calamities, and physical presence throughout the nations because he scattered them throughout the nations. By reading God's word, we're able to get these underlying details. He's not leaving us without any type of clue of who these people are. And again, skin color is just one of the many ways that these people can be identified. Okay, we need to know where these people live because the scriptures also talk about in the book of Deuteronomy, cursed shall you be going in and cursed shall you be going out. Okay, recently I just saw uh, the NFL Network. Again, <laughs> Michael Irvin, the sexual harassment allegations against Michael Irvin, the former receiver for the Dallas Cowboys in the 90s. Okay, and he's a network analyst uh, for ESPN and NFL Network over the last 15 plus years. Okay, Marshall Falk was fired from NFL Network. Same thing. These are curses that are upon our people. Okay, it don't matter how much money they make, how much notoriety they have. The scriptures say that when you see these people First shall you be going in, and cursed shall you be going out. Those Khazars who are currently in Israel are not cursed. And also, why is it important? I mean, common sense. Because these same cursed people would be the ones introducing covenant to the Gentiles. Okay? The nations who would have a 4,000-year faith deficit prior to Romans chapter 1. And technically, the curse of Esau was prophesied in Genesis chapter 25. But it didn't begin until at the end of this chapter. And then it's also mentioned again in Genesis chapter 27. Okay, because Jacob stole his brother's blessing. All right, so Genesis chapter 25, verse 25, describes Esau is red and hairy, like a garment. Why is the scriptures describing how this man looks? 
Okay, the Bible is not the Bible is the word of God. It's not something to be read as a moral of the story, although morality is a big part of the scriptures. But when we get to physical descriptions of people in the scriptures, this is this is not to describe the moral of the story, okay? There's no filler in the Bible. It's describing him for a reason, because obviously these people will need to be identified. And God doesn't just deal in the past. A lot of it is foreseeing the future. Okay, so these people will be populating the earth in the future. This is why it's describing Esau red and hairy like a garment. So Esau sells his birthright to Jacob in Genesis chapter 25, verse 33. Then Jacob receives Isaac by pretending to be Esau in Genesis chapter 27. Okay, again, stealing his blessing. So again, <laughs> it just measured the scriptures up to how our modern day justice system operates okay they're looking to identify the criminal okay to some degree jacob was a, a criminal to some degree but esau was far more criminal because of his lack in faith in the most high god he only trusts in what he can measure uh, tangibles okay things that he can control all right. So then God had grace on Jacob. God had favor. He favored Jacob. He loved Jacob because Jacob was a man of faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. All right. You see how I'm breaking down why this skin color thing matters, but I have to go through and peel back layers. Okay to give you this understanding. So Genesis chapter 27, verse 40, states that Esau will live by the sword. Okay, so this is another description of him outside of just his physical appearance. It's describing the type of lifestyle that he will live. And we know the scriptures also state that if you live by the sword, you shall die by the sword. So we need to know these things. We need to know who this man is so that his descendants can identify with the generational curse that was initiated by his sinful actions. Okay, so that they may repent. Esau shall live by the sword. Okay, and second Estrus chapter six, verse nine states that Esau is the end of the world. All right, Matthew chapter 26, verse 52 states that if you live by the sword, again, you will die by the sword. Keeping in mind that Esau is, again, identified as red and hairy. Okay, so God is identifying the criminals, the suspects, so forth. The same way that man who God has created runs their justice system by. All right. So it says he made his habitation in the mountains. Okay. From these Caucasus mountains. Okay. The mountains of Khazaria, Mount, Mount Sierra, which I'll talk about in another video. So him losing his birthright will cost Esau 4,000 years separated from the Most High and his covenant. Okay. 4,000 years. It wouldn't be again until Romans 1, when now the Gentiles will be grafted in because of the sins of their forefathers. Because Esau didn't have faith, now that curse is perpetuated down to his children and his children's children. So today, altogether, the descendants of Esau have inherited a faith deficit, and they've also inherited the blood money from living by the sword and accumulating reparations due to the descendants of Jacob. Okay, can you see the many ways these two nations may be identified 
and how important skin color is in the process of identification. I'm not I'm not just going to stop there. We go to Leviticus chapter 13. It, it talks about how the priests were instructed to identify men and women in the camp who had leprosy and also display features of the recessive gene, okay, which may be found in their hair and their eye color, the, the texture of their skin, all right, the color of their skin. And in these end times, particularly, these two identified nations inherit the weight of the gospel of Christ, okay, which is very important. And I'll be talking about it in the next two or three videos that I do in detail, in particular, part four. I'll be talking about this more in detail. The weight of the gospel, okay, and Esau has a lease agreement and an eviction notice over the earth. Okay, God is in the process of serving Esau an eviction notice, which is in the form of the day of the Lord. Okay, which the scriptures talk about. I don't have time to get deep into that in this video. But a lease agreement over the earth, God, God evicted the nations before Esau, who had dominion over the earth. Okay, the scriptures talk about Israel and the tribe of Judah. God said, I will wipe them like a dish. Okay, like one who's wiping a dish. So I will wipe them out of the land because they disobeyed me. Esau didn't take heed to the warning. So God is prophesying that this eviction notice will be served to him. Okay, again, I'm using the terms of this world to depict to you the forthcoming judgments against the nations. And on top of that, he still has a faith deficit. And again, because for 4,000 years, he was not in communion and obeisance to the Most High God, him and his descendants. Okay, so I will have to explain the way to the gospel again and the faith deficit further in the next videos that I'll be releasing. But I wanted to emphasize, again, the reason for me explaining these things is that if you do not identify who these people are, how can you teach to them salvation? And you're not letting them know the sins that they've been convicted of. Okay, and this is why the message that Geno Jennings preached by omitting all of these details that I'm giving to you is so dangerous. Okay, you're speaking too vague. Okay, and you're doing so out of fear out of selfish ambition, but I'll have to get to that as well in another video, all right?